Good morning and welcome into SBU TV. I'm Ethan Kippy. We're a little bit behind this morning, but good things come to those who wait. I'm Roisin Coleman. We begin today with news out of Washington. President Trump spent yesterday addressing the gun debate gripping our country. One of his solutions is to offer bonuses to teachers who undergo gun training. You come into our schools, you're going to be dead, and it's going to be fast. President Trump delivering tough talk today on school shootings, saying he believes arming teachers and coaches would stop more massacres. We have to harden our schools, not soften them up. A gun-free zone to a killer or somebody that wants to be a killer, that's like going in for the ice cream. That's like, here I am, take me. A day after listening to harrowing stories from students who survived the Florida shooting. How do we not stop this after Columbine, after Sandy Hook? And from families of those who did not. And I'm pissed because my daughter I'm not going to see again. Mr. Trump pledged to do what She's other presidents not have not. I want to end the problem. I don't want to have it where this happens again. And unless we're going to have an offensive capability, it's going to happen again and again and again. After unleashing a string of morning tweets on gun policy, the president met with state and local officials at the White House, where he proposed giving bonuses to train teachers who carry arms. You give them a little bit of a bonus. So practically for free, you have now made the school into a hardened target. This proposal is one of the many Trump plans to push in taking action to end all mass shootings. The evangelical Christian Billy Graham preached to nearly 215 million people over the course of six decades. The popular preacher died at his home Wednesday, but his legacy lives on. From Hollywood's Walk of Fame to Wheaton College in Illinois and across the globe, mourners are remembering Reverend Billy Graham. No one realized how humble, how gracious, how kind Mr. Graham, yes. Billy Graham is just an evangelist of all time. Throughout six decades, the evangelical Christian preached to nearly 215 million people. Christ belongs to all people. He belongs to the whole world. And prayed with every U.S. president from Truman to Obama and received the high praise of President Trump. Some people ask me, what is my number one prayer? I said, Lord, help me. <laughs> he had a famous friendship with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and took a stand against segregation. We don't have segregated meetings. And he took a stand for his uh, belief that every man is equal before Christ. As the world prepares to say a final goodbye to Graham, those who knew him say his legacy will live on. Even if you don't have faith and you weren't raised like me, I believe he still brought goodwill and caused people to live to a higher standard. And uh, so, you know, he affected the world for good. Billy Graham's family will hold a private service in Charlotte Friday before allowing the public to pay its respects on Monday and Tuesday. Billy will be buried next to Ruth, his wife, who died in 2007. The two were married for 64 years. The eldest daughter of President Donald Trump touched down in South Korea for the closing days of the 2018 Winter Olympics. Presidential delegation for the ceremony. Analysts suggest the decision to set Ivanka was for the United States to regain face after Vice President Mike Pence did not stand for the joint Korean team as it entered the stadium. She's planning to have dinner with South Korean Moon Jae-hoon in Seoul. Ivanka says she's looking forward to congratulating Team USA. The president tweeted this morning, My daughter Ivanka just arrived in South Korea. We could not have a better or smarter person representing our country. Ivanka says she's excited to congratulate Team USA. She said, quote, their talent, drive, grit, and spirit embodies American excellence and inspires us all. Did you get the SVU campus alert late Tuesday night? SVU TV's Robert Baberry gives us the details on the accident. Late Tuesday night at 11.55, students who signed up for the SPU text alert received a message that was in regards to a motor vehicle crash on Buffalo Road in the town of Allegheny. The driver was first spotted at a traffic stop on Constitution Avenue when the officer of the only police department had approached the vehicle, it had taken off. After a short pursuit, the vehicle had been lost, only to be found again later that night in what began to be a high-speed chase that ultimately ended when the driver failed to make the turn 
out of the city on Buffalo Street. Right now, 1,300 St. Bonaventure students have signed up to get on-campus alerts. That's more than 70% of student coverage. If you want to sign up, you can at www.e2campus.net slash my slash STVU. I'm here in front of the St. Bonaventure Safety and Security Building because your safety matters to us. For SBU TV, I'm Robert Barbieri. The driver was brought to the town of Allegheny Court and sent to Kagarox County Jail. The investigation is ongoing with possible further charges. Do you shop at top supermarkets? The company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy this week. SBU TV's Mariah Marrero talked to corporate officials and has the facts. I'm here outside a top supermarket. On Wednesday, Tops filed for bankruptcy. What does that mean and how will it affect shopping in your community? This is what I found out. As of Wednesday, Top Supermarket filed for Chapter 9 bankruptcy. Dr. Kenneth McCurr, president of Medaya College from Eyewitness News, explains exactly what that means. Chapter 11 bankruptcy means is they are putting a pause on the collection process, on the normal collection process of all of their debts. Tops is drowning in $732 million of debt of last April. Tops have a minimum of four months to figure out its debt problems. Worrying customers question whether or not their store will be open. Although they filed for bankruptcy, Top says stores are open with no day-to-day -day impact. With SBU TV, I'm Mariah Morero. Tops is reviewing its weakest performing stores, and a few could even face closure, according to the Buffalo News. During St. Bonaventure's spring break, Bonner Response is going down to Houston to help with repair efforts from Hurricane Harvey. SBU TV's Ben Solnick met with the group's coordinator, Jim Mahar, about the upcoming trip. Disaster hurt everyone. They hurt the rich, they hurt the poor, and underneath all the differences, the people are the same. Hurricane Harvey hit Houston six months ago and left behind a trail of destruction. Dr. Jim Mahar and Bonham Response will be heading down to Houston during winter break to help rebuild. The storm was back in August and they're still not back in their homes, or if they are in their homes, it's not really safe for them to be there. So our goal is to do as much as we can in the time we're there. Bonner Response student leader Don Carapresso talked to me about the work students will be doing to help rebuild. We're going to be doing things like sheetrock, painting, roofing, um, gutting, just general cleaning. I mean, you name it, we're going to be doing it. Carapresso also discussed the deeper meaning on why students are going to help rebuild. How a little is actually a lot. So it doesn't matter what you do. You could spend two hours simply re-putting shingles on a roof or painting somebody's house or just helping them install like that last bit of sheetrock. Um, it just means so much to people. After months of preparation by student leaders in Bonner Response and Dr. Jim Mahar here in Swan, they'll be heading down to Houston starting today till March 3rd to help rebuild communities. I'm Ben Solnick, SBU TV. For those unable to attend the trip, you can donate $50 to Bonner Response to help pay for five sh pieces of sheetrock that the students can use to rebuild houses. When no students return from that trip, or when everyone else comes back from break, it'll be time for midterm exams. And as those approach, the number of late-night study spaces on campus continues to increase. The Student Government Association is looking into making more 24-hour study spaces available. SGA is considering rooms on the second floor of Swan, rooms in the Walsh Science Center, and spaces in the annex of Plasman Hall. SGA is also looking for student input on which rooms they want to see open. Interested in learning about the complex and multidimensional nature of crime? We had a story about it earlier. And if you were to follow this potential new major coming to St. Bonaventure, maybe you'd be prosecuting people. Because St. Bonaventure is introducing criminology as one of the new majors on campus. We spoke with Dr. William Malinchin, chair of the criminology program, and here's what he had to say. One of the nice things about our program that fits so well with the criminology program with St. Bonaventure is criminology, when it's not done well, really should um, look at things such as peace studies, um, such as nonviolence, um, many of the Franciscan traits that, are, that St. Bonaventure stands for. Interesting to see, but I. I I just think we're going to have a lot of growth in students, and it, we're, we've got the program approved by the university, by New York State, so it's up and running. Um, but I think this is going to continue to, to grow into the future. According to the university, criminology consistently ranks as one of the most desired majors in the nation. But enough news, let's turn it over to Nick Gallo in sports. This is 
is FBU TV Sports, and I'm Nick Gallo. Your St. Bonaventure men's baseball team will be traveling to Port Charlotte, Florida for their opening season debut. They will face off against Chicago State University on February 23rd at 11 a.m. I got an inside scoop on team's upcoming game. After winning 26 games last year, Bonnie's baseball will be looking to have a great season as they finish third in the Atlantic 10 Conference. I spoke with senior outfielder Ryan McCarrick about the new faces on the team. We lost a couple guys, and uh, so we have a lot of new guys in, which is uh, exciting. So we're excited to see uh, what they got to bring to the table. Um, got some pretty good players, so it should be interesting. Uh, young guys, Brandon Nelson, Doug uh, Helder, uh, Matt Williams. Are some new faces that give hope for the Bonnies to achieve their goals this season? Whatever happens, happens, but yeah. let's just win. That's all I'm worried about. I also spoke with senior right-hand pitcher, Roman Wild, about what they need to improve for this season to achieve their goals. Um, just consistency all around. Roman looks to be a consistent performer for his team as he talks about his struggles from last season and how hard he has been working on his game. Last year I was very inconsistent. It'd be one good outing, one bad outing. So I worked really hard this offseason to uh, take what I learned from last year and get better at that. And then just overall be stronger. Yeah, just be better. The St. Bonaventure baseball team won 15 Atlantic 10 games last season, third most in program history and the most in 2008. Hopefully they can start off season hot this season and not get snowed in to their losses. This is SBU TV Sports, reporter Nick Gallo with your inside stuff. After losing three players to the draft, After losing three Bodies Baseball is looking to win the Atlantic 10 Conference in 2018. Today, Today, the St. Bonaventure women's lax team took on the Niagara Purple Eagles. The snow, although it caused a delay, would not stop this game from being played. The St. Bonaventure women's lax team took on the Niagara Purple Eagles in the snow. The snow, although it would cause a delay, would not stop the game from being played. The game, scheduled to take place at 2, was pushed to 5 due to heavy snow. Niagara, who entered the game undefeated, would strike early. The score was 3-0 after a goal from Samantha Brill. Minutes later, Grace Hunt would tack on a goal before Bonaventure would get some momentum. Riley Arnold would score for the Bonnies, assisted by Ashley Easterday, to bring the deficit to 4-1. Niagara would go on to win this game 16-6. Sean Mickey, SBU TV. The women are back in action on Tuesday at Fresno State. On Wednesday, the St. Bonaventure team pushed their team to nine games with a win over Duquesne. The Bonnies won the game 73 to 67. The Bonnies are back in action tomorrow night at VCU on CBS Sports at 8 o'clock. The Bonnies look to win their 10th straight win and aim to secure their second seed in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Thanks for joining us for SBU TV Sports. Now back to you, Ethan and Roisin. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us with SVU TV. I'm Roisin Coleman. And I'm Ethan Kibbe. We're off next week because of the university's spring break, but we'll be back with our regular broadcast Friday, March 9th. And during the break, don't worry, we'll keep you posted with all of the news you need to know on our social media sites, so make sure to tune in for them. Until our next broadcast, though, for everyone at SVU TV News, here's hoping you have a safe and happy two weeks, and may the good news be yours.